Hello, this is the next video in simple linear regression. Here we're going to look at a confidence interval for the mean response and a prediction interval on an individual response for a given x. And so as a reminder, we're in the simple linear regression setting. And, uh, the, and this tells us our data y follows a line with some air, fluctuates around the air term. Now, since we're developing confidence intervals and prediction intervals, we need to assume a distribution. So we're assuming the normal assumptions, which means the epsilon term here is normally distributed, mean zero, constant variance, sigma squared, and they're independent from one another. And so to develop a confidence interval, we want to estimate the mean response at x, so a given x, so x zero. So we want to estimate the average y for when x equals x0. And this is actually the uh, line. You know, if we assume our data follows a line, this is it. Now, these are population parameters. We don't know though, them. And so maybe a good estimate would, a good point estimate would be the regression line. So if we plug in x0 and then look at the value of the least squares line, that's going to be a, a good point estimate for the average y. And this is also unbiased. You know, if we take the expected value of y hat, it goes in, and these are unbiased estimates, so we do get our population line back. Now, the beta parameters, beta 0 and beta 1 hat, are linear in the y's, which this implies that y hat's linear in the y's. This implies y hat's normally distributed. And as I'm writing this, I thought, you know what, I probably should write y hat as a function of x zero, because we're looking at the average response for y at x equals zero. So this uh, least squares line is actually at x zero. So it's technically a function of the x's and specifically x zero. So this, the expected value of y hat is uh, the regression line, beta 0 plus beta 1 x 0. And remember, since it's normally distributed, we're defining the mean and the variance. So now the variance is of that is this. And then least squares estimate for beta 0 is this. Um, we can combine those and we get this. Now, if we look at the variance of this linear combination, we have two, two variables, this one and this one. And the covariance is zero. If you look at the properties of least squares estimate, we prove that. I think it's video three. And so we get the variance of y and then the variance of beta one, but this constant has to come out squared. And this is uh, sigma squared over n. The variance of beta 1 hat is this right here, sigma squared over SXX. Uh, we can factor out a sigma squared common in both. And that tells us that uh, the least squares line at x equals 0 is normally distributed with this mean and this variance. So if we subtract the mean divided by the standard deviation, it's a standard normal distribution. So now we could potentially use this to find a confidence interval for this piece. But wait, we don't know sigma. That's a population variance. So we need to estimate sigma squared with um, sigma squared hat, our estimate of sin, an unbiased estimate of sigma squared. And that's the mean square error. It's the sum of the squares residual divided by n minus two. But that changes this distribution of z, right? Before we put in an estimate, everything is constant except for this. And this is standard normal. So if we put in a variable here, sigma squared hat, that changes the overall estimate. Now, some people arbitrarily just go, oh, just put an estimate of the, the standard deviation, and that makes it a T. And technically, in this case, it does, but it's usually not that simple. So if we look at what we have here, Right? We're just going to put our estimate for sigma in. And that's what we do here. Okay, But let's rewrite this in a little different format. So let's take this over here, which is this, and times sigma. 
and then this we're going to rewrite here. Now this is a standard normal, and this ends up being a chi-squared divided by degrees of freedom, of course, under the square root sign. And I think the previous video, two previous videos before this, we showed that the uh, least squares estimates for the betas are independent of MSE. So that says the numerator and denominator are independent. So it is, in fact, a t-distribution. So now we can stick this quantity here, and that's the probability of being between, and these are the quantiles of a t-distribution within minus 2 degrees of freedom, alpha over 2, so it, that makes the tells alpha over 2. The probability of this is 1 minus alpha. Now we can multiply up, subtract over, times 1, and we get this plus or minus, and this is the confidence interval for the average response at x equal x0. Now, to estimate a individual response at x equals 0, now as a reminder, an individual response is this. It's x0 plus beta 0 plus beta 1 x0 plus epsilon, right? It essentially follows a line, but it's a little bit off. That's what we're trying to predict. So this is the, I'm going to call it, say, the, the next y. Well, what do we use as a point estimate? You know, we know it roughly follows the line. On average, it follows the line, but it could be above it or below it. Well, a good point estimate would be the least squares line, right? Because on average, we got it. The next y could be above it or below it, but in the long run, it's going to be that. So it's a, that's a good point estimate. Now, we know that y hat is linear in the y's. We just showed it, and it can be written like this. And we want to predict the next y, y0, for instance. So let's look at this quantity here. And we know that this is linear in the y's, right? The y hat was linear from 1 to n, and this is y0. So i equals 0 to n can be ci y where C0 is minus 1, right? And then the rest are determined by whatever this is. Um, so it's linear in the Y's, and it's normally distributed. And then, and then, like, I remember the first time that we were looking at this, I'm like, what? How does this come into play? We're trying to predict this, the next Y, not that difference. It makes no sense. But then it dawned on me that, this is really just kind of a trick. We're, we're going to find the distribution of this, and then we can back solve and isolate weight y0, which is the next y that we're trying to predict. So this is normally distributed. To find the mean, um, it's, you know, bring in the expected value. And then this is un unbiased, and that is a point estimate. Expected value of the residual is 0, so this overall is 0. The variance, remember it's linear in the y, so there's no covariance. So it's the variance of y hat at x equals 0 and the next y. Um, this we, we found was this in, in the page 1 and 2. And this the variance of y, the next y, is just sigma squared. So we can factor out a sigma squared and we get this. So that tells me that that is normally distributed. This difference is, right? Now, so if we subtract the mean of zero and divide it by the standard deviation, that's a standard normal distribution. So we can maybe use this to isolate a confidence interval for y zero, but we don't know sigma squared. So in a very similar development for the confidence interval for y when x equals zero, we replace it by the mean square error. And then this magically becomes a T distribution, and not magically, in a very similar development that we did for the confidence interval. And then, um, so we can take this quantity and put it in a probability statement, right? This quantity is T. So the probability of T being between these quantiles in the T distribution within minus two degrees freedom is one minus alpha. Um, when this is here, you can multiply that, subtract that, multiply by 1, and you can isolate y0, the next y, and it becomes this. And it actually, the formula looks very similar 
except for it has this one. If you take out the one, then it's actually the, it's a confidence interval for when x equals zero. But when you add the one, then it's a prediction interval on the next y. And this is the formula. Well, a couple notes that, the, and these are just general notes, the width of this prediction interval and confidence interval, it decreases as n increases, right? This gets bigger. And actually, the sum of squares gets a little bit bigger, which then this gets smaller. Uh, the width decreases as sxx increases. So if we spread out our independent variable, our x's, then this becomes large to this, which then makes it smaller. And so here's a, this is a couple ways that we can decrease the widths of our prediction intervals and confidence intervals. Okay, well that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.